Welcome back to the crawl space of the house that we're building for more testing. I am here with another of my mastermind students, Triandris. That's how you do. My name is Triandris Manning. I'm a service tech in Atlanta area and I work on HVAC. And he is learning all about how to test so that he can elevate himself to the next level within HVAC. So we're about to test this piece of equipment. First of all, do they leak air? Yes, all the time they leak air and without the system being sealed properly, you lose a lot of efficiency and also you can pull in a lot of other stuff that's in the crawl space and attics as well. So one of the things that a professional like Triandris can do for you is take your little silly filter that's one inch that you can see through and upgrade it to a, up to a four inch filter. I have a two inch filter that's gonna go on this return system and it's gonna be a MERV 13. If this box leaks, what Triandris just said about it, contaminants getting into the system, this is a very nice crawl space. So I'm not really worried about fiberglass particles and dust and mold and stuff like that getting stuck in the system. But if I have a filter on there, all the air should be coming through my filter. It's able to completely bypass any filter you've got if this is not airtight. And so what can we do about this? What are the ways to seal this cabinet? Well, actually the way to seal it is seal it with some really good mastic tape, or you can like tape it and seal it, seal it with mastic itself. And just make sure everything is tight. And the proper way would be to do a, a duct test. Cool. And so we've got one, two, three uh, compartment cabinet doors on this. If I seal this up with mastic or mastic tape, am I making it harder on myself later? To get yes, it? you're making it harder because you won't be able to get the doors off. And Okay. So this is a Mitsubishi piece of equipment. Mitsubishi takes this stuff really seriously. And I am sure that we will still find some leakage in here because this is one of the top heat pump pieces of equipment in the world, but it's impossible to have something that you can both have airtight and that you can open and close. Doors, yes. windows, all that stuff has the same problem. So without trying to shoot ourselves in the foot and seal this up with something that then we have to cut away to, to maintain the piece of equipment once a year, which you should always do, we're gonna try and find out if there are little things that we can seal up around the cabinet before we get there. So we're gonna go ahead and seal this up. Uh, the intentional openings, which are one here, the return, you can see the blower is right there past this little fiber filter that's just protecting the equipment. And then I've got the other end also sealed up before we put the plenum onto the supply and before we put the collar here, that's this bad boy right here onto this. Now I've been spending a lot of time making sheet metal fittings. You can see another video of me testing the uh, return plenum with one of uh, our other mastermind students. But this thing, I'm glad I didn't even try to do this because you see all the little folds that they put into this. Whew, that's a lot of work. So I did not try to do that and I'm glad that I didn't waste my time. So we're gonna seal this up. My brother's birthday next Friday. I'm debating whether to send him pizza or banana pudding. So now we have this totally air sealed. We have our uh, pressure side hooked up to this. So we're actually gonna be inflating pressure into this machine, finding out where the air is leaking out. We have, uh, we're gonna use, hopefully, not this giant opening, which uh, blows a lot of air. We're not gonna use even this smaller opening. We are gonna use this little guy right here. Uh, and hopefully we don't even have to use that. We'll see if we need to downsize. So before we do this, we wanna know what we're shooting for. That's really important. We have 2,200 square feet of living space here. There are 22 hundreds of square feet in that. So 22 times the leakage uh, maximum that we're allowed to future-proof this house, which is four CFM per 100 square feet. So 88 CFM is our maximum for the entire system for the entire house. Hopefully we're not even close to that with this piece of equipment. But code, the IECC code, expects that a quarter of all of the leakage that we're gonna have in the entire system is gonna come from this box. That's crazy. I don't wanna allow this thing to leak that much if I can possibly help it. So yes. let's find out how close we are here. Go ahead and get us running, if you would, please, Trey. And go ahead and hit at pressure. Okay. So did you hear what just happened? The, the fan drove up and then it fell right back down because we hit like 50 or 60 
Pascals. So that's good. This piece of equipment is actually sealed much better than my return plenum that I custom built. Mm. So we're gonna take this off, change the range, please, Trey, to 11. All right, what did we get, Trey Andres? 25, 25 Pascals, 5.6 CFMs. 5.6 CFM. I think that's pretty freaking good. Yes. <laughs> uh, even so, I'm gonna go ahead and just see if we can find where this might be leaking out. This, by the way, is called a Cirrus wind indicator. We get this from True Tech Tools. See if you can make it shoot away. Yeah, 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 right there. So we suspect the doors probably are the main thing. And again, even if we do find, which we're not finding the leakage there, right down at the corners, that's mainly where it's at. We are not gonna be masticking or taping up these doors because you need to get into the piece of equipment to maintain it. Pretty tight piece of equipment. All right, so now we have re-explained to ourselves as builders and to our clients who are paying for this piece of equipment why you would get a high quality piece of equipment. You can actually measure the difference in a good piece of equipment and a cheap piece of equipment. And you have been in plenty of attics where there's actually like air blowing out at you and cooling you off while you're working on it, right? Yes, and some of them we don't have to put tape on it. I didn't see people going far as far as like sealing them and everything. And it just shouldn't have to be like that because you have to tear them open exactly. to get to it. Yeah, silicone caulk should not be have to be installed on these things. But that's sometimes if you want to pass your, your code test, that might be what you have to do. <laughs> so we know we don't have to worry about this piece of equipment as far as the overall. If it is only 25% of our leakage, then that would mean that my total leakage of the entire system would be 20, which beats my minimum tightness by four times, which is great. So please do comment if you have other things to add about using duct tightness testers to test other things. You will see more advanced testing coming. I'm actually gonna test the pressure drop across this entire piece of equipment later on. Maybe you'll join me for that. Thank you very much for testing this piece of equipment for me today, Tree Andrews. Okay, yes, you are welcome. All right, you guys comment, like, subscribe, tune in next time.